Hey what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're covering even more twisted deaths in horror movies. We have some unbeatable ones, as well as some creative, funny, and because a few of you have requested it, least deserved deaths. So let's jump right into it. Buried Buried is an interesting thriller that was originally planned to be made with a ridiculously small budget as it all takes place in one box. Here Paul Conroy, a civilian truck driver in Iraq, wakes up in a small wooden coffin buried in the desert. He has a few tools down there with him, including a Zippo lighter, a Blackberry phone, and a few other things. Eventually he finds out that he's being held hostage by a kidnapper who demands a $5 million ransom, which of course he doesn't have. After some time, Paul manages to use the phone to contact the State Department. However, they will not pay the hostage taker, which is actually accurate. Some countries, including the United States, never really do that to decrease the risk of their citizens getting kidnapped in the first place. Throughout the film, Paul goes through an incredibly tough journey. At one point, there's a snake in the box with him and he has to fight it off, and sand slowly comes in from above as well. It's clear that he doesn't have much time. However, what makes this death so unbeatable is that he probably has even less time than we initially assume. One thing that is easy to forget is the limited amount of oxygen Paul has. It's estimated that he could probably survive a maximum of like 7 hours in a coffin like this, if you do not get fresh air. But that time is shortened by a lot because Paul is understandably hyperventilating, causing him to use more air than he usually would. And most importantly, he's using a lighter with a flame which takes up oxygen. And there's a big fire at one point down there as well. There simply isn't enough breathable air down there for Paul to survive. This movie, just forget it, you're dead. I mean, the average hostage situation that takes place in a foreign country takes at least a few days. Meaning that realistically, with the handful of hours Paul has, he is set up to fail from the start. They could theoretically trace his phone call, but that doesn't work. One of the FBI agents explains the carrier of Paul's phone is Egyptian, and apparently getting that many foreign authorities to work together on this small case would take too long. And even then, they would only get an approximate location, which will lead to a lot of digging as you're still basically looking for a needle in a haystack. It's also hinted at that the kidnappers are waiting above, so you wouldn't just be free to go if you managed to dig your way out. Apollo 18. I remember watching the trailer for this one in 6th grade language arts. Here we go back to the 1970s after the final Apollo mission, Apollo 17. NASA now has plans to send three astronauts to the moon secretly for Apollo 18, meaning the public won't know about it. But here's what the astronauts don't know. The government has no intention of ever bringing them back. After Nathan and Ben land on the surface, it doesn't take long for them to find a dead Russian cosmonaut in an abandoned lunar module not far from where they landed. They find him in a crater where the floor is described to be covered with soft rocks. But hold on, the Russians didn't go to the moon, so why didn't they know about this and what killed them? Well, we don't find that out until one of our astronauts, Nathan, gets a strange infection himself. While exploring the lunar surface, Something gets into his spacesuit and crawls around his helmet. Back in the module, Ben wants to take a look at what it is, but there is nothing in his suit. He does find a cut on his abdomen though, and it's what's on the other side of that cut that is slightly disturbing, because Ben can feel something hard underneath the surface. He performs a small surgery on his partner and pulls out what looks like a rock. Unfortunately, Nathan's condition only gets worse after that. The infection begins spreading throughout his entire body. Towards the end, we find out that this rock isn't what it appears to be at all. It's actually extraterrestrial life that looks like spiders. These things disguise themselves as rocks and can pretty much be any size, from stones that fit into your hands to giant boulders the size of cars. The fact that the spider goes under Nathan's skin and tries a living there, festering inside of his body without him knowing is so gross. And then being alone on the moon without any help makes the situation so hopeless. The government sent them on a suicide mission basically, knowing that there was something strange up there. With limited supplies in space in the 70s, again, like, you're done. Oh, and remember the crater with the soft rocks? Yeah, those were just a bunch of spiders that they were walking on. Later on, while the two are outside, it looks like the creatures kill Nathan, pulling him into the crater. Ben quickly goes back to the lunar module to make his way back home. 
but a few seconds before launching, we see Nathan again, who tries breaking the window to the spacecraft with a hammer, and even though he doesn't destroy the window, we do get an idea of what happened to him in that crater. Hundreds of spiders crawl around his face. If you're an arachnophobic, this is probably your worst nightmare. Tucker and Dale vs. Evil This horror comedy has a rather unique plot. The protagonists are two rednecks who basically try to protect themselves from a bunch of idiot college kids who can't stop killing themselves. What happens is that this group of young adults wants to go camping in the woods. On the first night they go swimming in a lake and one of the girls, Allison, gets knocked out while trying to jump from a small rock. Luckily, Tucker and Dale, two friendly guys who own a cabin nearby, were fishing close to them and rescue her. But when the kids see this, they misinterpret this as them taking her hostage. Ah, we got your friend! Oh god! They got Allison! We got your friend! Why the hell are they running away? Hey! The two take her back to their cabin in the woods to make sure she gets some rest. When she eventually wakes up in the morning, the college kids have found the house and try to get Allison back. Tell them what you saw. Well, it was really dark, but it looked like one of the guys was like, eating her face off. They're afraid of Tucker and Dale, so they try killing them. But this only leads to the college guys to die in very strange, unintentional ways. One of these geniuses sprints against a branch so hard that he impales himself because he thought Tucker was chasing after him with a chainsaw, when in reality he was fleeing himself because he was being chased by hornets. But the worst death is probably when Tucker gets out his wood chipper, which he only wants to use to get rid of some logs. Then Mike, who is somehow only the second dumbest guy in this group, tries tackling Tucker from behind with a knife. He starts running at him, but Tucker conveniently ducks to pick up another log, which leaves Mike jumping into the wood chipper head first. But it's not over yet. Tucker tries helping him by pulling on his legs, but when the others see it, they think he's pushing him further in. I love the choreography here. It's so smooth how he picks up the log and right that second he jumps in there getting like three feet of air. It looks like he's diving from the side of a swimming pool. I mean, what the hell was his original plan? To jump at him so they both go into the wood chipper? Some kid, he just hooked himself right into the wood chipper. What? Freaky. This was a surprisingly entertaining horror movie that had some pretty insane kills pepper throughout. In this horror version of Freaky Friday, a murderer switches bodies with a teenage girl named Millie following a failed murder attempt. Hello? Oh my god, why do I sound like that? After the body swap, the serial killer called The Butcher starts attending school as Millie and kills different students and teachers in extreme ways. One of the victims is the local mean girl, Ryler, who goes into the locker room with Millie to basically ask for a favor. They're in here alone, and during their conversation, Ryler makes fun of how she acts and misinterprets Millie touching her for an invitation to clam jam together. Those are her words, I just wanted to repeat them. I'm missing AP Bio, I didn't come here to clam jam with you. In reality though, it's just the butcher inside getting ready to kill her. Here is where the butcher is very lucky that the school has a bunch of cool equipment. Inside the locker room, for example, is a cryo chamber, which the students can use to cool down after a workout. But the killer has a different plan. He sticks Ryler in there, locks the door with a crutch, and lets her sit there. Since a cryo chamber can go below negative 100 degrees because of the liquid nitrogen used, Ryler quickly dies. Even though freezing to death is bad enough and extremely painful, it's really what happens afterwards that puts this death on the list. Millie, who's stuck in the body of a 50-year-old killer, doesn't really know where to go after the switch, so she goes to school as well. After walking around for a bit, she finds Ryler in the cryo chamber frozen solid. She touches her to see if she's dead, but this causes Ryler to tip over and break into like a hundred pieces. It definitely comes as a surprise considering you don't really expect her to completely shatter. And considering that the killer is using his surroundings and incorporating his environment into his kills, he definitely earns some creative points. Suspiria Suspiria is a remake of a 1977 movie of the same name, and this 2018 version is actually really good. 
One thing that instantly stands out is the really off and washed out color palette, which was a common thing, especially in foreign films around the time of the original's release. The story is about a young woman named Susie who moves from Ohio all the way to Berlin to join a special dance academy. That is Berlin, Germany, not the one in Texas. Anyway, what she doesn't know is that in this place, the women in charge perform witchcraft through the power of dance. Yes. Susie's arrival happens shortly after the disappearance of a different performer, Patricia, but she doesn't think that much of it. However, during Susie's first real rehearsal, Olga, another dancer, breaks down while practicing. She then storms off, insinuating that the three matrons are responsible for Patricia's disappearance, even calling them witches on her way out of the room. She then gets her stuff and tries fleeing the dance studio. But in the hallways, all of a sudden, she starts having some problems with her eyes and is lured into a different room full of mirrors. All of this, of course, goes by unnoticed by the other dancers. Back in the rehearsal room, Susie says that she can cover for Olga and do her dance. And it's here that we first get a sense for what kind of twisted witchcraft actually happens in this place. Madame Blanc, the head instructor, seems to quickly and secretly give Susie some magical powers by touching her limbs before the performance, causing Susie's movements to result in injuries on Olga's body in the other room. Like when she whips her arm forward, Olga flips over, that sort of stuff. <laughs> Throughout this dance sequence, Olga's body is contorted and twisted in such extreme ways that she becomes completely deformed and almost unrecognizable. It's so heartbreaking to watch this once caring, beautiful woman be turned into a, a pretzel. Now, I'm not going to reveal any more, first of all because of spoilers. You should go see this movie, it has just amazing cinematography. Reason number two is we're already out of time, and these videos go by so fast for me at least. Really quick, I just got out of Scott Erickson's The Black Phone, and if you guys like the How to Beat videos, you're probably going to like that movie. The entire thing is almost like a How to Beat video as a full movie that also has multiple satisfying storylines. Anyways, as always, let me know which ones you would have included. I hope you liked it and that I get to see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. I'm going to go watch Elvis now.